Hello everyone, Inventor719 here, and in today's video, we are going to be making an 1000 volt taser. For this project, you'll need a few things. You'll need three used digital cameras, a pocket knife, a pair of scissors, some electrical tape, uh, I have some speaker wire here. You'll also need two little paper clips, a plastic or cardboard tube, a candy container, and of course a battery to be used in your digital camera. So the first step is obviously to take the circuit board out of the camera and if you have seen one of my recent videos it is very easy to do, quite self-explanatory really, just um, start by taking out the battery of course, um, pry both sides of here off, and it'll come apart uh, under a few screws that are just used to keep the circuit board in place and before you start working with the circuit board grab yourself something metal this is very important and just rub it against the back of the circuit board like this to discharge any stored electricity to prevent from shocking yourself so get all three circuit boards and that's what we'll use for the project today so here are the three circuit boards I've extracted um, now of course we don't want to make a flash anymore so all we're going to do here is remove the wires from the flash box and so I'm going to use some scissors actually so just cut them off the white one is a ground I believe and we're not going to be using that one at all and then go ahead and cut the red wire and the orange wire and those there will be our power wires so now you have your one circuit board with the two cut wires and for the other two we are actually only going to be using them for their capacitors. So, as you can see, here's the capacitor attached to the circuit board. So, try your best to move everything out of the way, like this little light bulb. It's kind of stuck in there, actually. There you go, move them out of the way. And there's your capacitor. And now, use your scissors and cut it as close as you can to the circuit board so you can take it off of both circuit boards. There we have the two final capacitors, and I'm going to put those aside for now, and then on the main circuit, you're going to need four wires, and basically, what we're going to be doing is extending these few prongs, so I've stripped the red and orange, and then you're going to use two longer wires, and if you have a soldering gun, it would be much preferred, but if you don't, just do what I'm doing here. I'm sure it's quite self-explanatory, just twist two wires together so it's like that. I'm using speaker wire that's being cut in half. So there's that one. Then do one on the other orange one. And then with these smaller wires like this one here, um, we're going to be basically running all of our resistors here in a series or parallel actually, I'm not quite sure to tell you the truth. So Again, solder would be preferred, but if you don't have solder, simply put them on each end of your capacitor here. Sorry if this is hard to see, but essentially we're just going to twist it on. I'm going to clean this up with some duct tape and some hot glue potentially to prevent it from touching the other terminal. But there you have the little wire attached on there like that. So do one to the other side and the other orange wire, and I'll show you the next step. Now we've pretty much completed our main powerhouse supply, and the next step is to actually put it inside of our little candy container. Now if you have a bigger one, you will be a bit luckier potentially if you get to keep this little battery extension, but sadly I don't think I do. So what we're going to have to do, um, there's a few things wrong first this piece here won't go in so what I'm gonna do is just fold them down like this so he fits in nicely but this is also too big so I'm going to fold it a few times as well just like that and fold the top down too and now he should fit very nicely inside of our box. Now we're going to have to wire up an external battery source. So to do that, 
I'm going to pop two holes with my knife in the back of the container, just like that. And the last step, so I'm pretty happy with my location of the electronics. It's on the back side, you can see the button is actually that triangle thing right there. So if I were you, I wouldn't cut it out with the piece inside. Instead, just cut a few grooves like this. So you can see the etch marks. Then pull your piece out and finish cutting the hole with your knife. Here's the completed handle assembly. So what I've done is cut a hole like I showed you where the button is and I've also covered the button in some electrical tape uh, just to make sure there's absolutely no chance of electrocuting yourself. And I've wired the wires from the battery connectors out two holes and I've glued the battery on the top or I guess the bottom of my Tic Tac box and basically what you're going to do when you're ready to fire fire nope just shock something I guess is uh put the one end over like that and the other end over like this and then hook it up with a elastic band that's a good safety feature because right now there's no electricity connected to it at all now let's get on to the barrel portion next step to make your tube assembly which is kind of like the barrel is to get your two capacitors and measure two spots such as here and here on your tube is what I'll be doing and then using a little screwdriver is what I did poke some holes in so you'll have spots just like that to put your capacitor and as you can see the prongs go through now essentially what we'll be doing is here's the body part of it again um, setting it up in a little circuit just like that and as you can see capacitors have the negative side of it so it's important to connect negative to negative to the negative on the one in your box, which I've marked right here with a piece of electrical tape on the end, just like that. So what we're going to be doing is getting some wire, move that aside for now, get some wire. Uh, again, soldering would be ideal, but I don't have solder, so I'm just going to have to uh, crimp them together and use some hot glue. So just put the one wire on the end of... Um, this capacitor on this side, one on the other side, and then thread the wires through the hole and put this one in, so it'll be like that. And then on the inside again, take the wire that's going from the negative end of this one, this is quite important, and put it onto the negative end of this one, and then from there, connect the one straight from your box and do the same on the positive side. I would show you live on camera, but it's gonna be hard to see and sloppy. So I'll just show you the finished product. So it turns out that running these wires inside of the tube was much tougher than I thought. So I think quickly I'm gonna show you a little bit more of a tip on what I did. So first, like I said, is I connected the two wires to this capacitor, put them inside the tube. But the tough part is obviously working inside this little tube as you can see my finger barely even fits so what I did was eventually ran those wires up out of these holes um, to do that I got the use of a screwdriver in there and pushed through the hole while pulling from the other side and then from the box as I showed you um, the wires that were on your capacitor in the box um, the negative went to the negative over here which is indicated on the capacitor by the three negatives and I twisted them together and then positive I did the same so now this is kind of stuck in there and all I have to do is get my capacitor just like this and put the negative onto the negative positive onto positive and push it back in there and then we'll be ready to work on the prongs so here it is very close to completion I've glued the container onto the tube nice and sturdy and at the top here, what I've done is taken my two paper clips and I've taken a, a knife and skinned the plastic coating off of one and the other end. And on the small end, I attached it to my wire. And the big end, I extend it out just by bending it. So I'll have my two prongs now. And by the way, be careful when you're skinning the plastic off because I did cut myself 
and it started bleeding, so be careful. Anyway, now all, all that's left to do is tuck the wires in here like this, and using probably some hot glue and some tape, I'm going to affix both of the prongs beside each other, just about there and right here. So here's the final product. It's all attached in there. There's my exposed prongs. Put hot glue right on the very edge so they're really sturdy. You got your capacitor bank, all three capacitors, and each are stated to be 330 volts. The little photo capacitors, there's your trigger, and there's your battery source. Now the on the original circuits there's a light that would light up when your flash is ready to go which would be right in there so if that works or not I'm not sure so uh, let's get ready to go um, be very careful if you do build this and test it not to electrocute yourself and uh, let's get to some testing quickly before we get to the testing I'd like to say that um, if you are interested in building, building this project but don't have access to three cameras if you want them new they can be around ten dollars each so that can get pretty pricey so what I've decided to do, some of you may know I have an abundance of these cameras I got through a re like a local source. And so what I'm deciding to do is on my website, if you buy one of my Inventor 719 Ideas t-shirt, um, it's $20 American, free shipping to Canada and the US, I will give you three of these circuit boards for free. So go check that out. It's on my website. The link's in the description of this video. It's just inventor719.com. Makes sense, right? So yep, yeah, go ahead, buy one of those shirts. That'd be great. Also help support the channel. And get yourself three of these, which are technically worth $30. So pretty good deal if you ask me. Anyway, here we go with the testing. Uh, I am wearing a plastic bag, which is kind of like a rubber glove to prevent any shock. Um, I'm do testing this for you. This is the first time I'm testing it. Obviously, I don't want to shock myself if something goes wrong. So that's why I'm wearing that. Hopefully nothing goes wrong. Let me zoom out on my ham. And so first step is to charge it up. Here we go. Usually I hold it for about five seconds and it's fully charged with just one capacitor. The light is not lighting up. But I can try it anyway. So here we go, testing the potentially 1000 volt taser on my ham. In three, two, one. Okay. Um, didn't spark like I would have liked, but it smells like uh, burnt skin right now actually because it burned a hole straight through my ham. Uh, let me try on something metal, probably make a good spark. So there's a knife that I've now stuck in my ham. Let's, uh, let's do it again, so charging up. Alright, that should be good. The light sadly does not come on, but if you hold down for 10 seconds, it's usually pretty darn charged. So here we go, testing on metal. Three, two, one. Uh, okay, that was, uh, that was pretty darn good. It actually stuck to the metal. I'll do it once more, then I'll show you the damages. So I'm charging now with my middle finger there. Before I made this video, I actually shocked myself with just one of them, and it hurt quite a bit. So three would definitely hurt. Don't shock anyone. Uh, here we go, testing again on the metal knife. Yeah, it, uh, it welds it right into the knife. So there must be some serious heat and voltage going through. So there's the burn mark right there. into my knife and so yes looks like my thing works 
I'm no electrical genius, so I'm pretty sure that if you do them in series like that, it adds the power. If not, it's just maybe more time with the same voltage. I'm not sure. If anyone is good with electrics, let me know. Is this a thousand volts or is it 330 volts? But maybe more amps or whatever that stuff is. I'm not sure, but anyway, still a cool invention nonetheless. It looks cooler with more capacitors anyway. So that's a neat little feature. But uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the video. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe.